We are solving the mysteries of the universe. Have you ever worn an ankle bracelet? We all have. But you, my friend, you are wearing a bracelet on your mind. It is as good as it gets. Yeah. What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for jumping in to this video today. My name is Danny Coldblood, aka my music videos. And this is the second video concerning the whole zombie theme that I'm going to be doing. So if you did not check out the first video, go back and definitely do so because this video will be so much well understood if you've seen that first one. A lot of the ties, a lot of the references that I'm going to be doing in this video is definitely going to be taking you back to that first one. So if you did not see it, go back and take a big fat giant bite right out of it and then come and check this one out. So for all you returning motherfuckers, thank you yet again for jumping in. I got some pretty cool shit to show off and talk about in this video. Not too long ago, the actor that plays Michael, Ned Luke, seemed to be trolling on Twitter. So I responded to his little troll um, statements, and he actually liked it. Now, when I responded, I kind of hinted to the undead by saying, brought me back to life. And so the fact that he liked my comments makes me think that maybe we really are on the right track here, guys. I just wanted to go ahead and tell you guys that before we get started. I want to start this video off talking about miasma. Now, I touched on this a little bit in the previous video, but I want to go a little bit more in depth. Now, there's a lot of Greek mythology in this game. Tons of different uh, things that we see. There's so much Greek mythology within this game. Now, if you look on the screen right here, you can see that it's even tied to human stew. Now, we know that human stew is tied into Grand Theft Auto by a certain cutscene that we can see, but it's also tied to the Undead Nightmare DLC from Red Dead Redemption. Bon appetito! Jesus Christ, Trevor, what is that? What's wrong with you? That's just a... a what? An eyelid. It's probably not even human. Unless that gas station job. J Adios, amigos! Hmm? Oh. <coughs> I don't even want to ask what this is. I just put the pillow over his face. But the thing is, you see, I was real hungry. I couldn't exactly go outside the store, so I cooked him up in a stew and I ate him. He tasted damn good. The most common use of miasma, at least that I've seen, is when it's tied to a fog. And as you can see on the screen, one of the four horses of the apocalypse that you can have as a mount in Undead Nightmare is pestilence, which is surrounded by a green miasma. And in GTA 5, one of the biggest Easter eggs that we've had so far is Bigfoot. And in order to get Bigfoot, we need foggy weather. So I think that's very important. And then when you look at Undead Nightmare, okay, the Bigfoot scene for Undead Nightmare is almost identical to the Bigfoot scene in GTA 5. They even have the same voice actors doing the same parts for both video games, okay? Now, in Undead Nightmare, there's one slight difference. We have the goddess in the scene. <laughs> oh, oh, I got one, mister. Hey, I got one. Got what, mister? The damn Sasquatch. The filthy thing was going to eat my dog when this girl hollered out. And I shot the thing right through the heart, through the heart, through the heart. Bye, my kid. Miasma is even on this art picture here. A lot of us use the art gallery and the pictures as like references to try to find different clues on our path to solving the Chiliad mystery. And we also talked about this before, the Corel Miasma, and we know that Corel means a harmony, okay? Even a hymn, leading us directly to music, okay? There's harmony signs. There's a lot of clues that lead us directly to music, guys. We just have to know how to read the clues. Harmony is fragile. The greatest catastrophes occur when you men try to play God. We were given the Sanctus not too long ago, and even the definition of Sanctus ties directly to music because it is also a hymn. Okay, now when you think about a hymn, you think about a church. And if you look at this sign right here on the bottom right, it says First Redemption Church. 
first redemption, like Red Dead Redemption, and then you got the church. Now I've talked about this location plenty of times, Hill Valley Church. This ties directly into a lot of different things that we've talked about when looking into this mystery. Like Hill Valley is the same exact place in Back to the Future. But focusing on this sign, if you look at the word heart, it's missing an E. So that's definitely a sign for me, definitely pointing me towards hearts. Now looking around this graveyard, you know, not only is a graveyard a place where the dead are, okay, but this tombstone here is very suspicious. Not only has it been known to cause um, questions amongst hunters because it's got like a dark blackened cube that's underground here under the map, but when you look at this tombstone, okay, the two center circles, there's four circles, the two on the inside look like they could be revolvers, which takes me back to Red Dead Redemption. Now look at the two outside circles. They look like flowers. They almost look like peyotes to me. Now we do have peyotes in this game, but in Undead Nightmare we did not. But we did have a zombie peyote as a title to one of the songs on the soundtrack. Now Rockstar has definitely used their music before, and I believe music is a very big part. I won't get too much into detail, but let's go ahead and play a couple things from something they added in the game. The station, The Lab. Science has the answers. We have the answers. We are scientists. He is wearing a lab coat. I'm still consumed by murderous rage. Murderous rage. Murderous rage. Murderous rage. Ignorance is a rampant virus, yes. and you, my friend, you. you are infected. You are monkey number one in this outbreak. Everything that we just heard, rage, monkeys, infected, Outbreak, that's all stuff that I talked about in the zombie video that I came out with first, okay? So this is doing nothing but backing up the evidence that I've already shown you guys. Now looking at this clock, which is tied to, uh, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same, but we have the end of time, which is very Armageddon-like, apocalyptic, and we have Kronos. Now looking at a Kronos, that's tied directly into gods. If you look closely, it's even tied to a festival on a 12th day. Now look at the description, okay, they're very important. Right here it mentions apostle. Now that's tied into another 12 day type of thing because it's with the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, which we know Jesus Christ is tied directly to the definition of Easter egg. And right here, okay, a loading screen that I got today talking about the 12th day of Christmas. All right, all of this stuff is tied into Jesus, which is tied into gods, which is tied into Kronos, which is tied into gods, and even the mask that I just shown, which is tied into special powers and gods, okay? And this Kronos was located, look at the bottom right, strawberry, okay? What else is in strawberry that I haven't shown you guys? A couple different things, okay? We have the mortuary, and we also have something else that ties right back into the whole Red Dead Redemption type of theme, and that is a hearty taco. Now, that's kind of funny because eat your heart out and the whole zombie thing, but if you look below it, it says Mexican and American. Is that not the same exact uh, type of theme that we're looking at within these games? Like I said, the more that things change, the more they stay the same. We're on the same land here, guys. We're going to be affected by the same curse. All right, now another thing that is located in the area of Strawberry in this game is this place right here. And it's got eyes, and it's got a city, and I believe it's telling us right here um, to look at things with a different perspective, okay? Not only is this in Strawberry, but it's got a lot of clues I'm going to show you right here. Not only does it say units, units from $30, okay, unit, unite. But if you go ahead and you take a walk inside of here, you can see that it says Vinewood. But when I look at this, I notice that the N-E-W in Vinewood is lit up, like it says new. Now when I see that, I think of the eyes that I just passed by walking into here, and maybe looking at things with a new perspective, okay? Because we keep on seeing the same clues over and over. How many coincidences, guys, does it take before we start realizing that these mean more than what we're taking at face value. There's deeper meanings. 
And for you guys that don't believe there's deeper meanings, well, there's no reason that this is going on four years unsolved if it wasn't a little bit deeper. There's a lot of hunters out there and a lot of people trying to solve this mystery. If it wasn't deep, then it would have been solved already. Now look right here. We have a full moon and a big mural of John on his horse in Strawberry. John Marston from Red Dead Redemption. Guys, what else could they be trying to show us? Okay, and one thing I want to point out is right here on the side it says Vinewood Self Storage. For those of you that remember my video about the heartbeats and leading directly to the self storage sign which had a clue on it that led me directly to the whole entire Dulcie and underground tunnel thing. I made a 55 minute video about the underground tunnels which actually ties directly into everything I've been talking about because of the underground tomb and the stuff I talked about in the first video. So that's what I'm talking about. Looking at the clues, understanding them, and following them to see exactly what you can understand and what will be revealed. Like, look at this big giant monster. Now, I've looked at this for a long time, but one thing I know for sure is that I can connect this giant monster to another giant monster I've seen in the game, and that is right here at this sign. Now, this sign changes. When you zoom out of it, the monster and the whole fight scene goes away. But this stuff doesn't happen until after you beat a mission. It's one of the only changes I can see in the game happening from doing something else. Okay, beating the mission, Barry the Hatchet, makes that billboard change. A physical change. And Barry the Hatchet is all about graveyards and digging up a dead body and Michael Townley's grave. Okay, Michael Townley. Someone that, someone that we know that has risen from the dead at least once in this game. And this is pretty crazy because for us to look at this and notice that this does not happen until after we beat Barry the Hatchet, what exactly is the game trying to tell us, okay? And it's right next to a pawn shop, which I brought up in the first video, and you guys know by now the importance of a pawn shop. So, everything that I'm trying to show you guys, I hope it's making sense. I hope that what I'm trying to say and show you guys is becoming a little bit more clear. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, okay? And right next to this location as well, what do we have? We have a giant arrow, which we can catch the arrow. And if you want to look a little bit closer, guys, there's a lot more clues that we've talked about right before our eyes. I want to thank you guys so much for jumping in. Definitely stay tuned because this is definitely not the end of the clues and the evidence backing up the whole entire zombie and apocalypse theme. I'll see you guys in the next video or broadcast. Take it easy, and until next time, ta-ta, and as always, peace!